Welcome back to the second class of vitamin B complex, that is thymine or B1. Thymine is also called as anti berberi factor and neuritic factor as well. Brief overview. Vitamin B1 is a sulfur-containing vitamin. I stress here, a sulfur-containing vitamin has antineuritic factor, has antiberiberi factor, and if you see the chemistry, it is a white crystalline, can be destroyed by heat and moisture. Source, the richest source, there are many though, but yes, the unpolished rice or the husk and the pork. Requirement, 1.2 milligrams per day in men and 1.1 in women. Most important function, functions in the form of coenzymes or cofactors, like in the form of thymine pyrophosphate. Important deficiency disorder associated with thymine is beriberi and vonix korsakoff syndrome. So let us get in details with the vitamin. This vitamin is a water-soluble vitamin, the first one to be discovered as already described in the history of vitamin, but is quite susceptible to heat. Is it excreted through the kidney if you take it in excess? Like vitamin C, thymine and riboflavin, all these are very susceptible to heat as well as alkali. Hydrophilic and water will leach them from vegetables. If you wash frequently and boil and throw off the stalk, then you are actually depriving yourself of the rich vital nutrients present in the vegetable broth or the stalk. It is majorly going to function as coenzyme in the body and its functions are very, very important. Participates in energy metabolism. For 20 to 90% of vitamins, B, B vitamin, B1 vitamins, they are all absorbed easily and the, the deficiency is usually marginal and quite common. Commonly, all this down into free vitamins in the stomach and small intestine and absorbed by the small intestine. And once inside the cells, their cofactors are synthesized. So we don't have to actually take the cofactors per se because our body can make the cofactors. Thymine per se is a sulfur-containing group which has got a nitrogenous group in its pyrimidine, pyrimidine ring. So if you see over here, so let me draw the structure for you. Um, okay, let me draw the structure. So it has a pyrimidine structure, which has that amine group, correct? Then a thia, thia stands for sulfur containing, thiazole ring, okay? Which has a OH group, correct? All right. Now, these two pyrimidine and thiazole are bridged are connected by a CH2 group, isn't it? So now you can see here that, let me put it back. Okay, so you can see here, they are actually bridged by CH2. This makes it more susceptible for heat as well as alkali. Now, what is this thymine pyrophosphate that we keep addressing to? Yes, it is the coenzyme. So where does that phosphate group come and get attached to? It gets attached to at the OH group form, I mean pyrophosphate. So it is basically involved in release of energy from the carbohydrates. What are the major biochemical functions of vitamin B1? If I have to broadly classify it, then I would say it has major roles in two ways. One, through thymine pyrophosphate and another one in the nerve impulse generation. So let us see how it does through its coenzyme form and how it does in work in nerve impulse generation. Now, first and foremost, as a cofactor, it is involved in many of the enzyme complexes, complexes where there is a multi-enzyme complex, right? And one such multi-enzyme complex, which is typically similar in three places, is pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex, and ketoacid dehydrogenase complex. So in carbohydrate metabolism, this PDH complex is involved in oxidation of glucose 
especially the pyruvate to acetyl CoA conversion uh, and release of energy. Alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex comes in CA cycle again involved in energy production. Alpha keto acid dehydrogenase is involved in the breakdown or metabolism of branched chain amino acid. Apart from these dehydrogenase complexes, TPP is very important even in transketolase. Now, this is a major enzyme present in the, uh, what is that, non-oxidative interconversion pathway of hexose monophosphate shunt. It is basically involved in synthesis of pentoses, pentoses, you know, ribose and all for purine synthesis and hence basically necessary. So in Choto, your thiamine is actually very necessary for even your DNA synthesis. Also, again, because uh, HMP also is one of the oxidative pathways of glucose without production of any ATP. So yes, for complete oxidation of glucose, again, you require TPP. So if you have to oxidize glucose perfectly, then you have to have good concentration of thymine pyrophosphate, the coenzyme of thymine. How about the transmission of the nerve impulse? It helps in synthesis of acetylcholine. Remember, acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter which helps in transmission of the nerve impulse. So hence, even TPP is necessary for the nerve impulse transmission. How much do we have to take on daily basis? So RDA or the recommended dietary allowance for men is 1.2 milligrams per day. For women, it is 1.1 milligrams per day. The requirements increase in pregnancy, lactation, as well as the alcoholics to two milligrams per day and as well as in old age too. What are the sources, rich sources? Undoubtedly, unpolished rice. So parboiled rice, pork, whole grains, oil seeds, nuts, nuts, yeast. These all are rich sources for your vitamin B1. What will happen if there is inefficient or insufficient intake of this vitamin? We end up suffering from beriberi or Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. So what is this beriberi and what is this Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome? Let us talk in our next